everybody. Welcome to our first episode of season two. Can't believe we're here. And we're going to be covering this season, local lore and legends throughout the United States. I'm here with my co-host, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Marissa. So tell me why local lore and legends is something that piqued your interest as a topic for season two of Not Your Average Bucket List. Yeah, I mean, I think that is an answer decades in the making. (laughs) Um, I've just always been really uh, attracted to the it's kind of like the creepy legends and urban myths and, you know, all of those like tales passed down from family member to family member or things you hear, you know, on the, on the internets. Um, it's just fascinating to me, whether it is legitimate, not legitimate, something that, you know, was a result of society or like an actual historical event. Um, it just, I find it fascinating because it's kind of like that alt history. So um, how about you? Like what yeah. really made you interested in, in this topic for the season? I think for me covering in season one, we were talking about small town getaways and all those small towns, it was, they were all, we were talking in absolutes, you know, like this restaurant, definitely check it out. This attraction is here and you'll love it. I think the mystery behind local lore and legend, it it kind of, to me, adds to the intrigue because it's like, Mm -hmm. is this a real thing? Did this really happen? Is this just a story that people have been passing down for decades and just blindly believing. So yeah. like that mystery to me, I think is, is interesting. Yeah. So not going to lie, I have done my fair share of um, exploration, like not quite urban exploration, things where you're allowed to go because I'm afraid of being yelled at. <laughs> so I don't yeah. want the cops called on me, but you know, um, uh, you know, abandoned prisons and um hospitals or like looking at you know the ruins of a place like I've already done that in my own life so just continuing that research to me is so fun yeah I agree and I do think that we're we're pulling from a really great database of information from only in your state because Mm -hmm. over the years we've covered so many of these places abandoned places urban legends which are you know like places that you can't even visit but it's just these stories that are fascinating in its own right Mm -hmm. and then you know you have uh just creepy stuff and you know urban legends serial killers i mean all of these things kind of tie in together and only in your state has covered so many of these topics within our archives like probably in the thousands tens of thousands throughout the u.s yeah. Um, and anything that you read that just gives you a little bit of a chill or goosebumps and you wonder, like, is that real? Um, and you get that suspension of disbelief where you're like, OK, well, maybe maybe this is, is facts, you know, kind of like what you're right. saying about it's not black and white. It's um, something that, you know, can't really be proved either way, maybe. Yeah. Um, I will say that, you know, 12 year old Sarah, she whenever she transferred schools, she her first presentation was about uh, um, spontaneous human combustion and the New Jersey devil. So I did a two for, yeah, and I was just all in. Um, So it's, yeah, it's something I've always been interested in. That's awesome. And we're also going to be talking about the New Jersey devil in our New Jersey episode. So excited. So um, also just being uh, um, someone who grew up in New Jersey, there are quite a few urban legends. I'm sure mm-hmm. same goes for Ohio. You have all of those like local stories that people don't really know about unless they live there. But for New Jersey, we're going to be covering the New Jersey Devil. But also, um, there are a couple places like Shades of Death Road, which is a road that I used to li- live near. Really oh. creepy road. <laughs> Fascinating history. Just which take I, a left on Shades of Death and then you're there. Right, yes, which, yes, if you're giving those directions out, there's a problem. But um, I can't wait to cover these places and talk about them. Um, so what can we let listeners know to expect from this season and these topics? So I think something important that we focused on when picking out these locations is it's not just an urban myth or a legend. It's something that has like a 
concrete place you could go visit um, and something where you can actually research on only in your state to see, you know, find more information about the area and maybe even the specific legend we're talking about. So that was a huge um, factor. Like I didn't want to just say, you know, there are thousands of crybaby bridges in America. Go find one <laughs> because there, there are. Um, yeah. And so I think it's for me choosing those places that have that kind of tangible quality, even if there is like a myth surrounding it. Yeah. I think that's also a really good point that all these places that we're going to feature, I want to say the majority of them you can likely visit. Obviously you need to pay attention to trespassing signs, private property, all of those things we need people to be aware of because you can't just roll up on some of these spots and, you know, freely explore. So do your due diligence before you visit, make sure it's not on private property Make sure there's, you know, no trespassing signs are posted or anything like that. And it and it's not just for getting in trouble or not. Like there are, are dangers, like floorboards can break, you know, there can be like rusty fences, things like that. Or maybe people who are, have like hunkered down there that you're not aware. So yeah, yeah. be safe, be do your due diligence and research um, because we don't want anyone stepping into a precarious situation. Yeah. That's probably, it's, it's interesting because I do have this fascination with abandoned places and things like that, but I'm also equally scared to, uh, A, like you said, break the rules. Yeah. I don't want to yell that, but B, um, you know, like there's always, you just never know what you'll find. And I've had yeah. friends that really, one of my very good friends, um, she loves abandoned places. She loves exploring abandoned places. She has no fear just going into a ghost town or a, an abandoned Man. hotel. And I'm just like, I'll wait outside, you know, have 911 ready to dial <laughs> yeah, uh, yep. just in case. But um, do you have any friends like that that are just like brave enough to enter these places with no regard? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I can probably think of at least five. Um, and yeah, typically I'm the person who I'll like creep over the precipice. And I'm like, you know what? Um, I'm just gonna gonna stay outside unless of course it's like um there are certain places where you can actually gain entry pay a ticket and then you can explore yes. if that's the case love it i'll be there for hours right. but yeah I, I know quite a few people who will shimmy under fences or go through a window and it's just you know ill-advised i would say yeah Not yes <laughs> um okay so i was thinking that maybe we could discuss some uh creepy articles that we find on Only in Your State, just to kind of give people that are unfamiliar with Only in Your State some context to our articles that we share and uh, what they could find. Do you have any creepy articles that you know you found on Only in Your State or your favorite article that's the creepiest uh, that you want to just give a quick yeah. teaser? Well, I mean, I think there are a couple, um, but the one I came across recently was... Um, written for South Dakota, and it is about something that's hidden basically at the Mount Rushmore monument. I guess you, I guess you could say it's a monument. Um, and it's basically a hall of records, um, but it's not like a, uh, a place you can just like freely visit. It's protected, but there is essentially a hall of records that holds some information, but it's dug into the mountain. Like it, and it's not just like a little visitor's um, building outside and it what well, i think it um did did i send this to you it holds some like specific documents like uh yeah like i think like, like the, the bill like of rights constitution it, yeah yeah right <laughs> the big ones yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it is okay it's there's a, like an 800 foot stairway there's a rock tunnel going through mount rushmore and then the Hall of Records are there in a grand hall, which is like 80 by 100 feet big. And you can't just go freely in. And it, because I think it wasn't even finished, like I think they wanted to actually host something there, right? Like mm. be able to visit it. But no, now it's just this secret tunnel under Mount Rushmore. Maybe it was featured in National Treasure 1 and 2. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, this is it. So... I didn't even know this existed first and foremost. <laughs> it just blew my mind. Cause I really did just like reading the article. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, this has got to be the plot of a movie, but um, also just, I am a little, is this an urban legend or this is like truth that the declaration of independence is in there, the bill of rights. 
So there, I mean, the National Park Service posted a video on it. <laughs> so okay. I'm not sure. And this is one of the things that maybe I'm exposing myself too much here, but whenever you go to a museum and you see something in said museum, I have a hard time understanding if it's like a, like a, um, a model or a representation of what we're supposed right. to be seeing or the actual document right. or um, painting or whatever it is. So that I'm going to give you a hard maybe. <laughs> I think that, that's like yeah. exactly my point is that how are all of these things built inside of a cave in one of the president's heads? I think it's yeah. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. And we have all of these yeah. imp- very important documents. Like, you know, I, I honestly, I hope that's the case. I hope it's like, you know what, we're not going to keep it in DC or any like secret, like laboratory with like locks and vaults. We're going to keep it in this stone tunnel right. <laughs> in the middle of South Dakota. Let's hope it's fortified. Uh, yeah. You know, wow. That's and I don't wild. think it's, um, I don't think it's much of a secret. I just never heard of it. Um, yeah, I've never same. been to that monument, but it's wild to me. That I was like, oh yeah, there's a, there's a room in there that was going to hold all of our country's uh, big, important documents. So yeah, yeah. I know that is, it's mind blowing to me. Um, it really reminds me of the, um, have you ever heard of that seed library that I think is like uh, in some Scandinavian country or maybe Antarctica where they just have a vault of all of the seeds of every, you know, like plant species on earth so that way i don't know if something were to happen they have it frozen and saved on record somewhere how interesting maybe there are aliens there i don't know interesting (laughs) yeah very clever um let's hope that nobody forgets that combination to that vault uh you know (laughs) right protect that person at all costs um (laughs) so while we're not covering mount rushmore in this season was there any place that we've already discussed that we want to talk about that you're really excited to dive into. Uh, you mean that we're planning for, for this season? Yeah. So I am always very excited to talk about abandoned buildings and I don't know what the draw is. I don't know if it's just seeing the entropy of society and things fall apart and there's beauty in it, but it's also a little bit, you know, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's it has such a draw. So any of our topics that we're going to touch on, um, with that in mind, very excited. Uh, there is, there are a couple Ohio locations that have, um, that are specifically abandoned or have, were used for a certain purpose and are now shut off. Um, I don't know if you want me to tease it out specifically. Up to you. That. Yeah. Um, I mean... But yes, things like that, I think are the most, I'm the most excited. Um, and I know there might be a couple where you can't actually gain access to the entirety of the place, but then there are others that are just like in the wilderness, which you could probably stumble upon and explore if you wanted to. Yeah. How about you? Is there something just like top of mind you really want to get to? Um, so there's a little town in Florida called Casadega that is the psychic capital of the world. And it's just like such a fascinating place to me that apparently just there's a lot of spiritual energy and um, I've never been, but just kind of looking into it, I do think I'm going to pay it a visit because it's not too far from me, but yeah. uh, I think just paying a visit there. And then um, there's another, which to me growing up, one of the most fascinating urban legends, if you want to call it, is the Loch Ness Monster. Mm-hmm. I just had such a fondness for Nessie that I would go yep. to the library and look up photos of her and books. <laughs> and um, and we have a couple of those in the United States, which I had no idea. There's mm-hmm. one, I think, in Maryland, uh, in the Chesapeake Bay. Unoriginally, her name is Chessie. And uh, that sort of, I love that sort of stuff. Because I was just like, yeah. you know, there may or may not be a dinosaur just living underwater. And we have no idea. And like, sometimes there are photos, sometimes yes. like, it's just like that fascination to me. I, I love that mystery. Yeah. And even if it is something like, uh, oh, no, it's a rediscovered coelacanth or an oarfish or some sort of terrifying monstrous fish that we haven't, you know, we didn't even realize was still in existence. That is still fascinating to me. Like, even yeah. if it were to evolve, like, yeah, it's not actually Chessie. I'm sorry, Marissa. It's like, you know, <laughs> something else. Um, and honestly, same with so many of these like the cryptids that are spotted in the U S like each state has its own variation of, you know, sometimes like a Loch Ness monster or a Bigfoot. Um, 
lots of really cool things that I, I could just go on and on about it. Um, and whether or not it's real or their documentation, I, I don't know, but, yeah. um, it, you also couldn't pay me to go walking through the Appalachian mountains at night. So, you know, right. <laughs> the people who go yep. on that trail, kudos to you. No, I know. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> no. Um, that actually is a really great segue into, um, I've prepared a lightning round of questions for you okay. about all, all right. things creepy, scary. Um, and uh, so that that's going to kick me off with what is the scariest place you've ever visited? Ooh, okay. Scariest place. Um, I will say in terms of like keeping this season in mind, I would say that the uh, – the Ohio State Reformatory, um, uh, aka the Shawshank Prison, um, it is incredibly creepy. And <clears throat> just like knowing of the horrific past there, like the overcrowding, the deaths, the murders, you know, all of the like um, inhumane treatments of prisoners, things like that is one, shocking. But two, whenever they let you tour this place, um, you can go down into solitary by yourself in the basement. And I don't know if you remember MTV's Fear, which I was fascinated by that show. <laughs> yeah. And like, they're like, okay, your task is to go down into solitary and stay for a minute. I'm like, oh, I couldn't. no, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's a lot because you got the peeling paint, you absolute quiet, you know, you could get locked in stuff like that. Um, how about you? What is, what, what tops your list? Okay. Th this probably is going to sound very lame. I am going to save my Shades of Death story for our New Jersey episode. Yes, please. But um, <laughs> um, you're not. You're probably going to laugh at me. I really <laughs> don't like things jumping out at me. Okay. And this isn't necessarily a haunted place. But in Florida, if you're familiar with Universal Studios, every <laughs> October, they have Halloween Horror Nights. Yep. And I just so happened to visit when they were doing all of the greatest film serial killers. That was like the theme. So Michael That's Myers awesome. and, you know, Jason, Freddy Krueger, people running around chasing you with a chainsaw. Yep. And then you going through these haunted houses. And I just, I really don't like people jumping out at me. And mm -hmm. it just happened, like I paid for that to happen on a continuous <laughs> basis. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Very lame answer, but that was probably the scariest uh, place I've been to. So haunted houses just aren't aren't your thing. You no. you will go in support, but not exactly your. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll go, and I don't know why I do it. And afterwards, I'm like, I don't know why I did this, but I so still. What... Okay, so just a question: What is your reaction? Are you out in front going through? Are you a runner? Do you stop? Oh, no. What happens? Yeah. So I'll be behind somebody holding their shoulders <laughs> with my head down like this, kind of like letting them lead the way. Nice. That's well, what I'm paying for. <laughs> that experience. I will say that Universal Studios does it really nice, though. I It wasn't Hor Halloween Horror Nights, but I went for their Walking Dead um, haunted house. It was just real quick, but the quality was absolutely nutty. Yeah. I, I was impressed. Yes. No, it is. It is very impressive. Um, and terrifying. Okay. So <laughs> would you spend a full night inside of a haunted house? That's uh, a yes. That, and there's a two-part question to this. Yes. Okay. So the, <laughs> wow. I was going to say no. And the follow-up question to, was going to be, what if someone paid you? But apparently you would do it for free. Oh, well, <laughs> I guess I'm a rube then. Like, yeah, I'm just going to, I honestly think I would, not going to lie. Um, wow. The, uh, the prison does overnight stays and I've gone from like 10 PM to 3 AM and it was just super fun. Would I be able to fall asleep? Yeah. It also depends. Like if you were to say the haunted house, uh, you know, maybe not, but if you said, okay, get in your RV. So I drove from like LA to San Antonio and back and I was just like staying at random parks throughout. But one time I was like, ah, oh, there's no great RV camp. So I'm just going to stay in this like little neighborhood in Arizona. And that was the most terrified I've ever been. I have no idea why I locked the doors. I had everything closed, but I, I couldn't sleep a wink. So wow. I don't okay. know what it is. I, I always hear stories about people who go camping out West and some randoms will come up to their car or their campground and mess with them. And that's just yeah. that. No. 
Well, that's so interesting because when I was traveling on the road for years, I never had an issue or none of that ever scared me. Sometimes yeah. I would just pull off on the side of the road in my van and just sleep in a random place. And oh. lock, I know. I don't, isn't that so interesting that like, wow. I don't know yeah. for, for whatever reason, I, it just didn't scare me. I mean, I had ghost, which right. he's like, you know, the friendly security guard, which <laughs> isn't very rude. Re- yeah. 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 No, I also had an alarm on my van too. That was like, it was on the back of my van on my bike that if anybody bumped, if anybody basically it was so sensitive, that if anybody touched the van, it would go off. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's so, at least. Right. Yeah. So oh. see, yeah. that scares me. I'll take all the ghoulies. <laughs> okay. So, uh, have you ever said bloody Mary in front of a mirror? <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> Girl. I feel like that's like, you know, preteen hang out with friends like i'm gonna go be brave and go do it in the bathroom yeah i don't know you haven't never no i think even if i was at a sleepover and we were going to do it like i would just not do it just in case you know (laughs) just in case what about like candy man nothing like that none of it no okay no also in new jersey it was mostly ouija boards like that would be Mm -hmm. the thing which i've never used a ouija board Really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Would you ever? Do you believe in them? Is it just like... I'm not sure. I mean, it's the same thing with Bloody Mary. I'm not sure I believe. Yeah. Would I give it a go for fun? Probably. But I also... You you just know, like, kind of the tricks and things of why those things are so scary. So, like, if you're going into a mirror in a dark room, you see your reflection, but it's not quite your face because it's so dark. So then you start maybe seeing things in the mirror and freaking out and same with like the Ouija board the way that you know it's almost like a s- social um it's not like hysteria but like if so many people are, are doing it at once there's a reason why you think someone else is you know something's happening right. um yeah I try it <laughs> yeah wow love this journey um <laughs> so is there anything that like really terrifies you oh I mean I, I do have an irrational fear, like that's pretty right. legitimate, but um, I don't know. Like I always grew up playing like scary video games and watching zombie movies and like horror B movies. So not so much anymore. It's just like the, the whole fish aquarium museum thing that gets me. But I will just say that I went to a, a, a walkthrough aquarium at too young of an age and it did a number on me. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Yeah. You can't go to aquariums. Yeah. And even like pet store fish aisles are dicey. So it's, oh, um, interesting. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird thing. Um, how about you? Like what is, what is top level fright for you? Um, that's a good question. I think, uh, I used to be very much afraid of the dark, mm-hmm. uh, which is interesting because now I sleep with a sleep mask. <laughs> But um, I'm afraid of snakes. I'm I'm just okay. I'm not really fond of them, uh, and I've never had a bad encounter with one that has shaped this opinion. But sure, I just uh, they just creep me out, and I think it's kind of just reptile. A lot of reptiles in general, because um, I've seen there's a it's called a legless lizard. I don't know, if, and and that's not a euphemism for a snake. Um, <laughs> that is, and they were I f- like saw one in my garden one time, and they're huge and yeah. very creepy looking, and uh, so that just fits in the same genre as snakes. But yeah, I mean, you, if you're used to warm blooded animals and dogs, cats, things like that, I feel like you can kind of get their body language. But snakes and reptiles, you don't know what you don't know what they're doing. Correct, <laughs> coming at you sideways. This legless snake. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So really when I was traveling, I came across a baby rattlesnake Ooh. that, yeah, in the desert that um, I just lifted up like my garbage bag and there it was just kind of like curled up. Nope. <laughs> yeah. So. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, so uh, we were talking about films earlier. What mm-hmm. horror film scared you uh, the most or like has scarred mm-hmm. you for life? I think my original watch of The Exorcist. Um, Mm -hmm. I, the opening scene of (laughs) E.T. 
<laughs> when oh, he's okay. out in the shed, because I had a shed very much like that shed. <laughs> and I, I grew up in the country, so I didn't have any surrounding lights. So just wow. freak me out. Okay. Um, and then a, a newer one, but a goodie. Didn't really... I, it just let me feeling very unsettled, but Signs. That movie, Signs. Anytime yeah. it's on, got to watch it. Every time that you start to get introduced to the aliens, it just ooh, gets me. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. That's one for me, too. Yeah, Signs. Yeah. That's that one. Yeah, just that one uh, scene at the birthday party in Mexico where you see the, oh the my alien. Oh, my God, I know. Time, and, it's and the kid's just, like, yelling about it. Oh, man. So I, jarring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I also... J- the Rob Zombie uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah. All of yep. those those real life, kind, like hostile and films like that, yeah. I really can't, uh, That's they're tough to watch. So, yeah. Yep. Even yeah. actually, funny story. Uh, have you seen American Psycho? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I don't know what happened, but this came out on my birthday. At, I, I don't know if I was like, 11, 12, 13, 14, I don't even know. But, uh, and my mom was like, hey, let's go to a movie. You pick the movie. I don't know why I picked this movie. Oh. I didn't even, right. <laughs> I didn't even know what this movie was about. I don't know how they let me pick this movie. We walked out of the theater. And because it was just like after that first murder, I was like, what is, ha-? I'm like, mom, get me out of here. So <laughs> you can no longer know. listen to Huey Lewis in the news. It's no, just ruined for you. <laughs> Oh no! Also, Christian Bale, he's a he's a tough one for me, but wow, yeah, I'm surprised yeah. that your mom wasn't like, oh, that sounds a little rough. What is that? Right, I don't even know if she like she didn't even research it. Sorry, mom, I don't know. I led <laughs> you down a path because she also can't watch movies like that. She is yeah. Hallmark through and through. That oh, is okay. her genre. So this was probably very scarring for her as well. Um, so yeah, that was a an interesting birthday. Um. <laughs> But so, uh, two final questions in a zombie apocalypse, what would be your weapon of choice? Okay. Hold on. All right. So (laughs) I've given this a lot of thought. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So two things. So I would go between something like some sort of pole arm or a spear because you need to get some distance in between you. But then that also is tricky because if you're thrown off balance or something gets pulled away from you, you could get in more trouble. I don't want to be up in their face doing any melee stuff, none of that. I would lean towards really perfecting like a bow and just, because that's something you could potentially make more of maybe if you are, or even just like find some. Yeah. I just worry about ammo and things like that. If you know, to me, I feel like it has to be something that's relatively simple. I, I read this one book, um, uh, the hand oh gosh what is it it's the handbook to the zombie apocalypse yeah i think wasn't it written by mel brooks's son oh um, i don't know but yeah just like that little like gray handbook and i remember going through it and there's like the shaolin blade and like all these different mm. suggestions so i think i'm going with a bow okay yeah what it's about you answer. uh i think i would just do a machete yeah i like to uh yeah my aim's not too good with uh, any sort of bow or gun or anything. Ammo would be a huge problem. I I want to keep distance enough. I feel like a machete is just long enough to get close enough, but far away. Yeah. Um, so yeah, machete would be my answer. So here's what we can do. I'll, I'll be your backup. You can go okay. in the fray and I'll just cover you. Love It'll that. be fine. <laughs> okay. I do, yeah. That would be actually great to have somebody with a bow just like, you know, and then if I had to step in, then I could swing in a machete, but... Yeah. It also um, depends. This is a whole different topic. Is it fast zombies? Is it slow zombies? Are they the undead? Right. Is it a virus? There's, we can build that out later. <laughs> right. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. We need a whole episode dedicated to zombie ap- apocalypse. Maybe that'll be a fun uh, post season two, like <laughs> dig into the zombies of the United States of America. How would we handle it? <laughs> Those are usually my favorite movies. I love apocalyptic movies. So mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and final question: How much? Actually, maybe I should. I need to rephrase this now that I know your haunted house answer. Would you sleep inside a coffin for the night? Ooh, that's that's a tiny box. I, I would say no. Okay, great, excellent. I was preparing <laughs> for that. How much would you have to be paid 
to sleep inside a coffin for the night. Okay. Uh, I don't think we cover this on Only in Your State, but I, I can come back to it. Um, for the night? Oh, man. That's rough. Because, yeah. like, especially if you can't pop your head out to double check, like, you're not buried alive or anything like right. that. Right. Yeah. A couple grand, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay, high end of a couple grand or like just like a couple grand because. <laughs> I mean, I think, I, you know, I feel like if I'm having a, if I'm having a rough day and I'm real tired, it might be fine. You know, <laughs> maybe it's nice and cozy. I don't have to, you know, add my white noise machine. It's just the nice right. little tight box. <laughs> yeah, a couple melatonin and. Oh yeah, real out. nice. <laughs> Would you do it at all? Is that even an option? I don't think so. I yeah. think there's just a, a like a claustrophobia thing for me that I've never been in the position where I have to be in a tight space like that. But um, not having the freedom to, like you said, just pop your head out, I think would mm-hmm. eventually just mentally kind of drive me nuts. Yep. So I don't think I would. It would prob- I would probably need at least like 10, 20 grand to even consider that which at wow. that point who's paying to see me sleep in a coffin nobody so look i know craigslist is wild you might find it <laughs> so who knows uh yeah, I, I will say though like that's pretty dicey however i like for for our season i think i would probably do or visit most of the things that we're going to talk about even if i'm a yeah. little bit sketch on the details or how we'd actually do it but if i was given the chance i think i would yeah no i I think it would be my creepy bucket list of like okay let's do it let's head to the pine barrens i got it Oof, gosh um i mean that's great i'm i'm on the fence about half of them so uh (laughs) we'll see but i do think it, it is cool we're featuring a lot of states that we did not talk about in season one which i think is mm-hmm. very cool and you can essentially make a road trip out of a lot of these stops. Yeah. I think, you know, there are some states where we're going to be covering, you know, multiple uh, creepy places, local legends. So if you're the type of person that wants to get out on a weekend and go do some creepy stuff, uh, this might be the the podcast that kind of pushes you in that direction. So, Absolutely. Um, I know I, I love podcasts that talk about lore myths legends things like that but a lot of them yeah you, they're not accessible you can't actually go visit um so i i hope that's going to be a big benefit of this season as well as um <clears throat> I, I know i'm going to put the call out now but we'll also do it um off the podcast too but if you have any local stories or cryptids creatures things that were passed down even if it's like a tiny tiny town like hey we have a devil's triangle and a crybaby bridge and this is why and the mining town caught on fire perfect let's call in let's talk about it i'd love to get some other ideas from from listeners yeah absolutely we will put the number the our phone number in the show notes Mm -hmm. we also have an email address um that's probably my favorite part is hearing from the listeners that season one uh people were writing in about uh the small towns we featured but also their own small towns that deserve to be highlighted and we really we really do love to hear from everybody listening. And I would love some personal stories about these places that we cover, uh, Mm -hmm. especially, you know, the creepier, the better. Yes, I agree. (laughs) Even if it's something, you know, that's not like searchable and it's just your own personal experience. I have a couple of friends that are like incredibly into UFOs and that kind of paranormal stuff. And they have so many personal stories that just blow me away. So yeah, maybe I can get them to call in. That'd be fun. That would be great. If you're up for an audio adventure, we will be exploring local lores and legends in the U.S. on Season 2 of Not Your Average Bucket List, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. So make sure to like, subscribe, and join us.